This is BMW's i8, and this is my iPhone. The two are completely unrelated, save for the fact that their name starts with an i. That in mind, both are perhaps the best representation of what our future would look like if somebody from the past traveled ahead in time. And yes, I'm gonna tell you more about it, not the iPhone, the i8, right now. So, we've been waiting and waiting for this car. In fact, I was on another press drive in LA last year when I passed a whole fleet of them. But alas, it's here and we only have it for a few days. So this review, to say the least, has been a bit of a time squeeze. For any of you wondering about BMW's future, this is it, much like the i3, which we reviewed and charged off a gas generator last year. Occupants are housed inside of a carbon fiber reinforced plastic tub, which is evidently found as soon as you swing open the doors. Move to the front of the car and you'll notice that the grill is completely sealed, which isn't to say cooling isn't needed for the electric drivetrain at the front as there is a massive air scoop. I'm told that removing the front hood requires two people and a degree in aeronautics, or at least BMW would have you believe. The rear of the i8 is perhaps the most interesting as it includes a set of very pronounced wings, which is part of their special stream flow design. It's all presumably wind tunnel derived technology and there you will find a small space for storage, including a wall charger. By now you might have noticed that the tires aren't of typical supercar width, but that's to reduce rolling resistance and in turn improve efficiency. Now, there is a special way to get inside of a car like the i8, as the door sill is far higher than a traditional sports car, which looks not only super cool with these wing-like doors, but seats you pretty low in the car. It's ass first, then rotate in. This is the safest way, but most certainly not the only way. Inside, you're greeted with what is almost a typical BMW interior, though the Germans have taken it another step. The driver's instrument cluster is all screen and is complemented by a HUD. There's also a cigarette lighter adapter, a USB, and an aux input. Occupants in the rear will enjoy no comfort unless they're smaller than five feet, since the roof allows no headroom, and the legroom is unheard of if the driver or front passenger is over 5'8". At night, when the car is unlocked, the interior will glow blue. Our i8 included the upgraded Harman Kardon audio system, which is to say, despite the $100,000 plus price tag, you'll still have to pay extra for more stereo. Now, driving the i8, much like the interior and exterior, is an experience all on its own. By now, you might have learned that this car has two motors, electric and gas powered. The electric, which produces 131 horsepower, 185 pound-feet of torque, pulls the car, which is to say it drives the front wheels. The rear, a 1.5 liter turbocharged three-cylinder, powers the rear wheels. Combined output is 362 horsepower, and if you're playing along, that means the fuel sipper produces 231 horses. Working in tandem, this will get the car to 60 miles per hour in 4.4 seconds from a complete stop. It's all made into a six-speed gearbox, and if you're looking for a seventh or eighth gear, don't. This car probably doesn't need it because it's already efficient, producing a combined 29 miles per gallon, same for the highway, and one less for city. That's provided, of course, you're not running on electric only. In that mode, the i8 will travel about 23 miles and up to 75 miles per hour, though those numbers are mutually exclusive if you catch my drift. Off the line, the i8 isn't all that remarkable. Hammer the accelerator with both motors engaged and there's still a bit of lag. This is despite what should be instant torque via the electric motors. Disappointing? Yes, but that's the only sorry you'll have to stuff in your sack. The i8 has a variable suspension. Shift the stick to the left to sport mode and the 1.5 liter three cylinder engine not only growls with anticipation, but the suspension stiffens for a pleasurable, spirited driving experience even the most enthusiastic of car obsessed will enjoy. What is real versus fake engine noise is hard to tell, but does it matter? For those of you wondering, yes, there is a launch mode. It's easy to engage. This will, of course, dip into your battery's juice, but you didn't need me to tell you that. You can't perform this in all electric mode, and if you try, you'll end up with a zero to 60 of 9.2 seconds. Getting out of the i8 can be almost as challenging as getting in. Rain, as I experienced yesterday, will drip on you as you exit the car, albeit slightly. And while some might call exiting a laborious process, others will purely see the beauty in the doors. So. 
On paper, the i8 looks remarkable. Heck, in front of you, it's jaw-dropping. But it's only when you sit in the car, slung low in the driver's seat and behind the wheel that you finally get what this car is all about. Sure, a drag coefficient of 0.26 is nothing to sniffle at, nor is the curb weight of 3,400 pounds. And while there's little to no storage, it's a technological feat that has all of the aforementioned, can reach 60 miles per hour in less than five seconds, and still travel up to 20 some odd miles without expelling a single carbon molecule into the air.